In this last example on Newton's laws, let's take a moment to check your understanding. Consider the three stationary blocks shown in the drawing. The masses of the blocks are given, and there are frictional forces acting at the interface between the blocks and the horizontal surface. A force is applied on block one, as shown. And so you're asked, the net force acting on block two is zero newtons less than F, equal to F or greater than F. So take 10 seconds to think about this and come up with an answer. So the question's asking about the net force, in particular on block two, but key here is we're told that they're stationary. If they're stationary, this tells us from Newton's first law, where we're looking at the x components here, that the net force is equal to zero. It's stationary, or moving at a constant velocity, either way, but in this case it's stationary, and so there'll be no acceleration, and so an object at rest remains at rest, and therefore the net force is zero. Instead now, let's consider an example where there will be motion. A force F is applied to, as shown to the three boxes in a row. But suppose there is no friction now. If a force of 20 newtons is applied, what is the contact force between boxes one and two. Given there's no other impeding forces, i.e. like friction, there must be acceleration. And so the applied force F here and the total inertia, that is all three masses together, determine the acceleration A of the system as a whole. So that's key to this problem. And so that total force that's applied gives the same acceleration to all three of them because they're connected or they're in contact with one another where the, the force is actually applied to the very first box and it pushes the second and it pushes the third. And so that total force provides a net force to each of the three that then accelerates them along at a common acceleration. Let's have a closer look. Let's look first at the action-reaction pairs between the boxes. First off, we have that force that's applied here, the total force, and it's applied to box number one. There's an equal and opposite force then that it applies to the hand, or whatever's applying the force to the, to the box. And I'll say that I'm putting this as my positive x-axis in this direction. And so box number one then exerts a force on box number two. So the force on box number two by box number one is F21. But it will exert then an a, a reaction, reaction force on box number one. So it exerts a reaction force on box number one, I'll call it F12, that is in the opposite direction but equal in magnitude to F21. And box number two goes on to then exert a force on box number three, and it exerts a reaction force on box number two, where it now is in the opposite direction, but equal in magnitude to F32. And so we have this series of, of forces and action-reaction pairs. Using those, let's then look at the free body diagram for each one of them. This shows the, three, the free body diagrams for each of them. In the y direction, we're always going to have a normal force and a force of gravity. But we're not really going to need those in terms of the acceleration or the motion because they're resting on the, on the surface. We will, however, need the other forces. And I'll relabel them here so that we have all of them for our free body diagrams. And the only one we know up front is that this force is 20 newtons. And we know that we're supposing there's no friction here, otherwise we need to add uh, a friction to the left, a friction force to the left for each one of these objects. In the next step then, 
we want to look at the net force for each one of those objects. And I'm missing one force here. I'll put this. This is supposing that we have all three boxes. So looking at all three boxes together as a single object with a total inertia of m1 plus m2 plus m3 where we've applied that force F equal to 20 newtons. Why? Because from that I know here what the force is, I know what the total inertia is, then I can solve for the acceleration. And if the boxes are being pushed from the left, they're going to stick together and they're all going to accelerate at the same acceleration. And so I know that this then is just 20 newtons divided by 5 plus 2 plus 10 kilograms. And I get an acceleration of 1.176 newtons, which I know is just force times acceleration, so it's or mass times acceleration. It's kilograms meters per second squared divided by kilograms. Those cancel out. And I get my units of meters per second squared. For each one of those objects, then, I can look at the sum of the forces in the x direction. And so I've got f in this direction, but I've got a negative f12 in this direction. And that will give me my acceleration for that box, m1, and I know what the acceleration is. And so I could go ahead. I know that my total force here was 20 newtons. But I can go and solve for, solve for the force F12. So this is the force exerted on 1 by box number 2. I know that the magnitude of F12 is the same as the magnitude of F21 because they're an action-reaction pair. So the force exerted on 1 by box number 2 is equal and opposite to the force exerted on 2 by box number 1. And so I know that this magnitude is also 14.12 newtons. And thus, I could solve for force 2, 3 being just that one, F2, 1, minus its acceleration times mass. And lastly, I know that the magnitude of F2, 3 is equal to the magnitude of F3, 2, because they are an action-reaction pair. And so it tells me that this one is 11.768 newtons. But in fact, I should have also been able to solve for it here, and I'll confirm its value then, because we now have 10 kilograms times that same acceleration that we saw up at the top for every box. And indeed, I get the same answer. So in summary, points to notice here is that the total force that was applied is what gave the acceleration to my collective inertia. They're moving together as one, and so they all will have the same acceleration. Once I know that acceleration, I can go back and figure out some of the other forces. And so the contact that I was asked for was the contact force between boxes 1 and 2. And that's this value here, F12, which is the same in magnitude as F21. The force that 2 exerts on 1 is equal and opposite to the force that 1 exerts on 2. And that follows all the way through in terms of actions, reaction, pairs. And so I see that the contact force exerted by box number 1 on box number 2 is 14 newtons. And the force that box number 2 exerts on box number 3 is 11.76 newtons. Collectively, they all move together at the same acceleration. And so from that total force, I can see that for mass 1 times its acceleration, 5.88 newtons was needed to accelerate box 1, 2.352 newtons 
was needed to accelerate box 2 at the same acceleration and 11.76 newtons was needed to accelerate box number 3. And you could check that that matches what you get here. what you get here and what you get here for a total of 20 newtons.